Welcome to part nine of the American Revolution. Now we're gonna take a look at the Battle of Cowpens. So after the Battle of Camden, of course, Horatio Gates is fired, right? And pretty rightfully so. And he's replaced with Nathaniel Green, who was the quartermaster for General Washington uh, during the winter in at Valley Forge. Right now, Nathaniel Green takes a look at the situation and he realizes really quick, says, well, obviously I cannot defeat Cornwallis's troops in a face to face fight. Right. They are too big and too powerful compared to my small and rather scattered forces. However, he also realizes that he has a very large logistical advantage. The British Army is a behemoth. It's huge. It has a very large supply chain that it has to have. Uh, it relies on heavily this very uh, um, critical umbilical cord to the troops, right? Meanwhile, his forces are small. They can survive out of supply for weeks at a time, just foraging off the land, right? They don't have heavy equipment that they're moving around, right? To give you a comparison, the British Army is a uh, it's a semi truck with a 50 foot, three foot trailer attached to it, right? And Nathaniel Green's forces is a smart car. Which one do you think is easier to turn and can move quicker? Which one do you think you can find a place to park, right? As a matter of fact, smart cars, heck, you don't even have to park them. They're small enough. They actually fold up and fit in your wallet, okay? The British Army is just big. And so he's going to take and use this to advantage, and he's going to engage in a tactic that, well, even the Chinese refer to as active defense. He's going to give up space and time in order to slowly whittle his enemy down and force them to make mistakes. Right. He's going to draw them further and further from their supply lines because he knows they have to depend on this uh, logistical line. So the further you can draw them from it, the more difficult it is to maintain. So you use these small, fast forces. You try and get the enemy to break off small branches to try and chase said small, fast for forces. And then you attack and destroy those smaller little pieces. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And for as good as a commander as Charles Cornwallis was, he played right into Nathaniel Greene's uh, hands here. He started splitting his forces up to try and capture this smaller group, right? And these smaller groups that he sent out after Nathaniel Greene's forces would be ambushed, right? Colonial ambush tactics. Remember, the British Army is designed to fight these set-piece battles. Well, these guys aren't doing this. They're using guerrilla warfare. And on top of that, most British uh, soldiers are ne have never been exposed to some of the diseases that are prevalent in the uh, American South. So his soldiers start getting racked with things like malaria, right? Disease starts to have a major effect. Matter of fact, uh, probably about half of Cornwallis's troops uh, here during this time going after Nathaniel Green, about half of them are probably too sick to fight. So he's having to deal with that as well. So this brings us to the pivotal battle here at Cowpens. Now, the colonial forces at Cowpens are under the command of General Daniel Morgan, right, a protege of Nathaniel Green, right? And he's being pursued by a portion of Cornwallis's forces that are under the command of Banistreet Tarleton. Remember the very aggressive Tarleton, okay? Now, Tarleton thinks he's got Morgan hemmed in. He's got a beautiful open cavalry fighting field in front of him. Uh, and then you got the the broad river behind Morgan that's flooding, and so he thinks, oh, Morgan can't escape. But what he doesn't realize is that Morgan has set uh, um, Tarleton up for a trap. He's intentionally picked this area to fight this battle because it has that beautiful open field in front of him, but it's bordered on three sides by forests, okay, by heavy trees, okay. And what he has is he has a frontline skirmishing army that's a bunch of raw recruits. And his plan is to lure Tarleton into the correct position by using snipers, snipe at the officers of, um, of Tarleton to try and get Tarleton to move into a position where he'll see in this field this group of green infantrymen, which he successfully does. Now, the orders that Daniel Morgan gives these infantry, these raw recruits, is Fire once, twice if you dare, then run like hell. A fake retreat, right? He wants them to feign a retreat. So these guys, some of them are literally going to like fire once, drop their guns, and just start hauling ass, right? 
Um, now, of course, as soon as Tarleton sees this group of skirmishers shoot at him and then begin to retreat, what is he going to do? Well, he's going to do his Tarleton tactic. Swords out, cavalry goes rushing in to hack these guys down. What he doesn't realize is that these guys are running into the tree line, and right at the tree line is a line of experienced Continental Infantry, right, in a skirmishing formation, ready to engage them. And on both flanks in the tree line are Colonial Cavalry. He's fallen into a Kesselschlag, a cauldron battle, right? He's trapped, right? And it's going to be a disaster for Tarleton's Dragoons, right? Um, you're going to have 110 British soldiers killed, 200 wounded, 500 captured, right? Morgan's going to lose only 12 men killed, 60 wounded, right? Um, the uh, uh, Tarleton is going to be one of the few to escape, and then he has to go back and report to Cornwallis, hey, we just got trounced, right? What do you think Cornwallis thinks when he sees his best field commander just got trounced by this smaller colonial force? Well, he decides at this point he needs to change tactics. What he decides to do is he decides, I'm going to shift north. I'm going to cut off the supply lines to Nathaniel Green's forces. Because unfortunately, Cornwallis is making another military mistake. He knows how dependent he is on his supply line. What he doesn't realize is that Nathaniel Green is not as dependent on his supply line. But he's thinking in terms that he has the same issue. If I cut off his supplies, he's in trouble. Well, when he tries to do that, the result is going to be a disaster for Cornwallis.